Hey everyone, Andrew here, and today I'm going to be doing another manga series review. This is the third one that got it suggested to me around the same time that Kiss Him, Not Me, and Monthly Girl, Bebede Kun, I don't remember the name, oh. <sighs> was suggested, and much like those ones, this one was actually quite surprising. The name of this manga series is Ore Monogatari, or My Love Story. Yeah, this one was definitely not what I was expecting at all. First, I'm just going to talk about the main character, the main guy. The main character is Takio Goda. Now, this is not a typical anime lead. In fact, this is such an obscure character design that I can't even really name too many that have characters that look like this, especially leads. The only two that I can think of that have characters even close to this are JoJo's Bizarre Adventure kind of has guys that look like this, but at least they're also described as being super handsome at the same time as being muscular bricks. The one that really reminds me of this one would be or Char Charge Men's Private School, but that it, the difference between both of those and this one is those are action series. Those are supposed to have main characters where it's not about them being romantic or love interests. This is about them being strong and tough and warriors. But My Love Story is a romantic comedy. And you have a lead who is like a gorilla brick house. It's really interesting. I kind of like that. I, it's, it's like, because there's not a lot. I can't name too many things even of American stuff that has a character that looks like this as the main. It's always pretty boys. It's usually, even when they do nerdy guys, like, if he's described in the book as nerdy, he's always played by an attractive actor. It's very rare that you have a lead that's this. So, the plot of my love story is we meet Takio Goda, who is very wants to help people and wants to protect people and who is very tough and scary looking and all, constant, has always fallen in love with these girls, but none of the girls are ever interested in him. They are always interested in his neighbor slash friend, Sunaka Makoto Sunakawa. And every single time... A, 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 that Takio gets into a girl, she goes and confesses to Sunakawa, who always turns them down, and he never turns them down kindly. It is always as blunt and rude as possible. The, but the fact that this keeps happening over and over and over again leaves Takio to believe that there are no women left for him. All of them only care about Sunakawa. And he, this started when they were in elementary school and has continued on into their current high school days. Takio and Sunakawa are on the bus, are on the train, um, heading home, and Takio sees this girl being uh, felt up slash molested by one of the other passengers, and he reaches over and basically grabs the guy's hand in a vice-like grip and won't let go, and asks the girl if she's okay. And she looks up at him, and he is immediately like, she's she's so pretty, I love her. And it's like, okay, well, I'm sorry these guys bother you, we're gonna go turn him into the police. And she's like, I'll go with you. And is telling the cop, you know, this guy was feeling, uh, you know, feeling her up and touching her, you know, her legs, because she's in the school skirt. And he, the guy's like, it's like, well, she's asking for it, wearing a skirt, so he doesn't even get to finish the sentence because Takio punches him as hard as he freaking can. Basically sends him flying right in front of the cop. And he's like, oops. And cuts to, and I've been suspended from school. The girl shows up at Takio's place. And her name is Rinko Yamamoto. And she's baked all these... Uh, She's baked a bunch of desserts as thank you for Takio for and Sudakawa for rescuing her. And Takio really likes her, but he gets the impression, believes that she, 
she is only there to talk up to Sunakawa. And Takeo likes her so much and is so interested in her that he just wants her to be happy. Even if that means he is unhappy, he just wants the best for her. And normally, Sunakawa doesn't care about any girls. He's never said a nice thing about any girls, but when Takeo asks him, Sunakawa's like, she's really nice. And it's like, oh, that means she has a chance in. That's the first time I've ever seen it. It's like, so Takeo takes it on himself to try and help Rinko win the heart of Sunakawa. So he's talking, so he and Rinko go out privately and are talking. And Rinko starts to cry and she's like, I'm sorry, I'm, I gotta go. And goes home and Takeo's like, Asking Sinakawa, like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what happened. And it's like, I would just, you know, I don't know what she made her cry. And they hear a knock on the door. And it, and it's like, hey, Sinakawa, so it is, and it's Rinko. And it's like, Takio, Sinakawa's like, okay, Takio, hide under my bed and just listen. And he does. And Rinko comes in and Sinakawa, so it's like, what's going on? And Rinko's like, so I was trying to talk to Takio and... He just wouldn't stop talking about you, and I I don't think he likes me, and I really like him, and I really think he's so cool and kind, and it re he basically full-on reveals that she is in love with Takio. And I love that Takio hears all this, and literally, like, doesn't crawl out of the bed, he just lifts the bed up and fully stands. And it's like, it's like, I... I love you. It's like, I like you too. I think you're amazing. And they become a couple. And that's the first book. And that's kind of shocking. Because, like, Sinakawa covers, says it perfectly. These two characters are as obviously in love with two people, with each other, as can possibly be. Like, you've never met two people more absolutely in love. And then it's like, this book series is 13 volumes. You have them as a couple at the beginning. What's the next 12 books going to be? And the weird, interesting thing for, for me is that it's just their relationship. It's just them as a couple. And I'm like, I wasn't expecting any of this. So I only knew, the only thing I knew about this when I started was that the lead was the big muscular guy. And I was like, that's weird. That's an interesting thing I've never come across before, as especially for romantic comedy. So I, I was expecting the whole series to be him trying to help Rinko get Sunakawa, and then they would slowly develop a relationship, and she would slowly realize that she is in love with, actually in love with Tokyo more than she is with Sunakawa. But no, it's not the plot at all. And then I was like, okay, we got to this point. I'm like, okay, so no. So Sunakawa said he l thought she was nice and liked her. He he's going to become the new love part, the love triangle. So he's going to try to get her. And it's going to be a fallout of these two friends, uh, like Peach Girl did. And no, that, that doesn't happen at all. Sunakawa never tries to Rinko because he can tell that how much they're in love with each other. And then you find, you find out that like the reason Sunakawa turn down all of those girls that Takio liked is because all of those girls were bad-mouthing Takio behind his back. And Sunakawa's like, I'm not gonna ever be near or friends with or like a girl who's so mean to my best friend. Which is interesting because Takio for the whole first half is like, of this of this first book, is like thinking that him and Sunakawa aren't best friends, that they're only friends because they're neighbors and realizing like, no, they're actually each other's best friends and they do truly care about each other. It's such a weird thing to have a, a series, any type of series, especially a romantic comedy series that has a relationship and has the focus be on the relationship and has it actually just be a natural growing relationship without going overboard. Because even it's like in most mangas and most animes and most television shows in America and books and movies and everything, couples... You don't do a movie based on the, usually, you don't t tend to do a story that's all about the after-they-get-together relationship. 
there's always, a, especially not so quickly and so right off the bat. It's usually a buildup. And I understand why. I know the part of the reason is because everyone's afraid of the moonlighting effect. For those of you that don't know, Moonlighting was a TV show in the 80s. It starred Bruce Willis. And the main plot, main thing of the series was the will-they-won't-they they of the main couple who worked together and then ended up becoming a couple. And at the and basically, they got together at the end of Season 3. And then they got cancelled partway into Season 4. And a lot of people believed it was because, like, well, once the couple got together, who's going to keep reading or re keep watching? And it's like, reality-wise, no, the reason Moonlighting fell apart was because of writer strikes and a bunch of bad stuff happened. Plus, the two main people couldn't stand each other. But, you know, there's a lot of other factors. that. But that's the excuse everyone uses. So that's why you get series like Friends, where Ross and Rachel are together, and then they're not, and then they're together, and then they're not. It's like, not, you know, you don't have a relationship where they're together for the majority of the time, because... You know, you can't let that happen because people will stop watching. But, yeah, so there's not a lot of people, the series that are that brave and will do that kind of story. So, and especially without any, like, breakups or love triangles or extra drama, extra things. We need to keep people reading. And this one doesn't have a lot of that. And I'm like, I was really interested in to see what they would do with that. But I was also worried. I was worried because what are you going to do with a couple that's so clearly in love with each other? And how are you going to keep this going? So the first site that I was reading this on only had the first 25 chapters, which is about half the series. And I was like, okay, well, I'll start it and I'll see how far I get. Because I didn't know how long it would be able to keep the interest going. And I finished that first 25 pages and I'm like, or chapters, and I'm like, I need to keep going. So I had to look through like four different other sites until I found one that had the whole series and I read the whole thing. And that tells you something considering kiss him, not me. I only read, I read 20 chapters of and stopped. And I only read like six chapters of the other one. So the fact that I finished what 25 and went, I have to read more says something right off the bat. And I was expecting, you know, love triangles. I was expecting, them to go full on marmalade boy with a love triangle on top of a love triangle and have every single person trying to break this couple up because they want to be with the other people. And honestly, no, this, the series only has two love triangles in the entirety of it. And neither one of them are bad. So I, um, I dislike love triangles right off the bat. I'm just going to say, I like, I dislike tri love triangles, especially when it's an established couple. If these two people are not dating and someone else wants one or the other, okay, it's, a, it's an even playing ground. But like Marmalade Boy, like the first set of love triangles in that one is really good because the main guy and the main girl aren't a couple yet. So the other two at least still had something of a chance. I hated every couple after that because these two were dating and everyone knew they were dating and they were still trying to break them up. And I'm like, I'm sorry, if you see a girl you like dating another guy and they're happy together, you stop. If you go after that per if you go after that other person and you try to break them up and you try to be the one that they're be with, that just makes you an asshole. Or the devil. I count both. I think you're both at that point. You're it's like it's just the most evil thing you can do. And yes, in this one Takio and Rinko were a couple when the other person in the love triangles appears. It's it, the way they're done is really well. So the first person to get a love interest is Takio. Um, Takio was competing in his school's sports festival and was doing a relay race. And one of the racers got injured and they had to replace her with the, one of the random girls on from the class who wasn't very good runner named Maria. And she didn't like Takio at the start and was terrified of him and was like worried that he was going to yell at her for being slow, this and the other. And Takio's like, like, okay, I'm going to help teach you how to be a little bit faster, how to run a little faster. And 
coaches her into becoming, you know, a faster runner. And she ends up like tripping, but manages to make it to him so that they win the relay race. And she realizes that she has now grown to develop a crush on Takio. And at the end of the sports festival, finds out that he is dating a girl. And she's like, oh, all right, well, we can be friends. Yeah. And she starts calling him coach. And he, but realizes that she still really cares about him and really likes him and ends up confessing that she actually has a crush on him. And Takio's like, oh, um, thank you, but I'm in love with Rinko. And instantly leaves and goes and tells Rinko what happened and that he's in love with, only in love with her. And that's actually, like, that's the way you deal with this kind of love. It's like, she confessed how she felt. She got turned down. She moved on. Okay. I'm like, this love triangle doesn't bother me at all. Most of this was more of a showing of um, how jealous and worried Rinko was about someone stealing Takio from her. And a lot of people, like, Taki Takio's like, yeah, like, why would anyone try to steal me from you? I'm just, I'm not cool. And the realization of, oh, someone might actually try to, but that's never going to happen because I love Rinko. Type of thing. You get a little bit later on in the series, and Rinko gets her own love interest triangle with this. Um, she, so she, Rinko likes to bake things and likes to make cakes and pies and all this stuff. So she gets a job, part-time job, working at a bakery. There she meets this famous baker who works there, and he sees her and how kind she is and how nice she is and sees her, falls in love with her and sees her as his muse. And then he meets, finds out that she has a boyfriend and then it's like, oh, and then sees Takio. And Takio being this big gorilla like of a man is like, you cute thing are with this Hulk? And goes out and is like, like you're Rinko's boyfriend, yes. Like, wh why? Like, do you even bake? No. You need to break up with her. I'm the better fit for her. And Takio's like, uh, doesn't know how to respond to that. The baker's like, okay, I'm going to be competing in this event. And I need her as my muse. When I win the event, I'm going to tell her how I feel. And I will not do anything before that. And Takio's like, okay. And it's the, like the whole this this is sort of the same thing that happened with Rinko's reaction to Takio having someone interested in, him. but it's a little different because Rinko's was worried about people stealing Takio from her, and didn't didn't want people to steal it. Whereas Takio is knows someone wants to steal her, but he's trying to figure out what is best thing for her. Because for him, it's all about her happiness and what's best for her and doing what is everything. So he loves her and wants to be with her and doesn't want to give her up and he, as he realizes. But he also knows that it's her choice and that if she thinks, if she believes that he's a better option for her, that's all he cares about is that she's happy. That is that is his main motivation. It helps with both of these love triangles that you 100% know that the person trying doesn't stand a chance. Like, at all. There's not and, and I also like the fact that they play clean. They're not trying to break up the relationship. They're not trying to make the other person look bad in the relationship. They're like, I'm going to confess, and we'll go from there. And... Really cool thing with this one is that the the baker forgets his his knives and all of his his tools. He forgets all of his tools at the office, and and Rinko calls Takio and set you know tells him that. And Takio is not even anywhere near the shop. Gets out of a bus, runs full speed to the shop, and then full speed to the competition and gets there in time, and gives it to the baker. And the baker's like, "Why are you doing this? You know, if when I and I win, if I win, I'm going to tell her." Why are you helping me? He's like, don't you want me to lose? And he's like, no, I want you to win. I, th I know you, I know Rinko believes in you. I know you are a good 
great baker. I want you to do your best. You deserve the chance. And then whatever happens after happens after. And he wins. And he tells Rinko. And Rinko, of course, had no idea that he was interested in her this way at all. And she's like, um, yeah, no, I'm with Takio. I'm on his side forever. And of this type of love triangle, that's how it needs to be done. And I'm, and it's like, I really want to hate the Baker character, but I did grow to like him by the end, especially because one of the themes of this series kind of is like everyone that meets Takio is changed and almost always for the better. But yeah, the majority of the story is just them. It's just Rinko and Takio having a relationship and going through the normal first love, first girlfriend parts of a relationship. Like, when do we start holding hands? Um, when do I, when do we kiss? Do, um, do I meet her parents? Do you know, it's like, what, it's like her, it's like I go out and meet her friends. What if her friends don't like me? Things of that nature. And it's, and it's really interesting to see a romance that's built on this very normal kind of beats for a relationship. And I love the fact that these two main characters are like like almost completely pure. And that like there's a point la later in the series where Takio meets Rinko's family and he meets uh, Rinko's little sister. And Rinko's little sister is like, "So do you guys just make out all the time or what?" And they both Literally, they both turn to her and immediately say, we have a normal, healthy high school relationship. AKA, we're not sluts. Don't call us, don't tell us perverts type of thing. We're not doing that. It's such a, like, a cute, innocent moment of, don't say we do things like that. Because at that point, they'd only kissed maybe once. Which is, like, a really good buildup for this. It's like, throughout the series, they... You know, they slowly start to hold hands. They go out and hang out all the time. And you get to a point where it's like, okay, we need to... I, it's like, I have I have to even consider starting to kiss her from Takio's perspective. And it's like... Like, he thinks of this, like, months before he actually does it. So, like, the really funny thing is like, okay. So, I'm, at a certain point, I'm going to want to kiss Rinko. And I want to be good at it. So, he goes over to Sinakawa's house. And he's like... I need to practice kissing. It's like, well, there's a pillow. No, I need to practice kissing on you. <laughs> and and Rin Sinakawa's like, not in your life. And Takia's like, be a man! And tries to kiss him. Oh, uh, and I think the monk, like, I saw pictures from the anime and the live action one, which I've seen the trailer for the live action of this one. The live action of this thing looks amazing. I really want to see it. But in both of those, he has a sheet of, um, saran wrap to like protect their lips from touching each other in the manga i'm pretty certain he does not and he's just it just fades to black as he tries to do it i'm like we will never speak of this again after but we need to do this now just oh and you get to the point later where rinko's starting to think about kissing and she's trying to get sinakawa to help and he has a flashback to that night. He's like, nope, nope, I'm not thinking about that. Oh, oh. And so he's like, he and, uh, and Takio are talking about it. And he's like, okay, when do you think is the right time for a first kiss? And Takio goes, in the autumn, when the cherry blossoms have fallen. And the sun is just perfect. It's like this super poetic thing. And it's even funnier because there's a later point where you talk to Takio's dad. And he, the same kind of question comes up of, oh, are you kissing her? It's like, they can't be kissing yet. It's like, well, when's the right time to start kissing? And he's like, in the fall, as the cherry blossoms fall. And he does the exact same speech. It's like, okay, we know where Takio got that from. It's his father's influence. Oh, Takio's parents are a major part of the series. It's really cool. And especially because you can tell that they're his parents, because Takio is the perfect combination of both. He's got his quieter, kinder nature from his dad, and he's got his strong determined nature from his mom like his mom is pregnant for the first half of the series and she's doing all these things that you know pregnant women shouldn't be doing but because she's so strong like her son it's like she can handle it no problem she caught this other pregnant woman when she was falling down the stairs she's just like full-on fireman cat caught her and it's like you're all right i did good <laughs> and it's like oh it's 
And but you also see how kind and caring Takio is because every time he sees his mother doing anything that's even slightly heavy, he jumps in to try to take that from her or help her with it and make it easier. And yeah, but back onto the romance and the building of it. It's just it's a nice slow build up. It just goes at a good pace, and yet none of it feels dragged out. None of it feels like it's taking too long. It's Every chapter is interesting. Every chapter has something about it that works really well. If it's, like, the first time Takio meeting the friends and all the friends being dismissive of him because he looks like he does, and Rinko getting super mad at her friends for, dis for insulting her boyfriend and basically leaving the karaoke shop that they're in and Takio following her and then coming back and that building is on fire for reasons, and then, like, Takio runs in and rescues all of the girls from the fire, and, like, all of them are like, he's so cool, and he nearly dies doing this, he, gets, he inhales a lot of smoke and ends up, like, locked in, and you think he's, he might not make it, and he thinks about Rinko, and he just jumps out the second story window, and he come and crashes down and lands, and he's like only thing left is uh, his is boxers because that's all melted off, and it's just like you you understand why Rinko thinks he's amazing because he is he's basically Superman without flight, but he does like there's a point where like a steel girder is falling and is gonna hit Rinko, and he just stands up and catches it in midair, <sighs> and just like well not. What, no, he catches it before it hits her and just protects her. That's what, His thing is he really likes protecting people and helping people and doing the right thing. and Which is really interesting because you get to a point where Rinko is actually a little jealous and sad that when even when they're together alone, his attention is everywhere. He's aware of everything around him. He's aware of her, but he also will notice if someone's about to w walk into a... a dangerous part or someone you know something's about it's about to happen and he will rescue them and she's like like i am jealous of this however part of the reason i fell in love with you is because of this and who you are and it, as long as you are looking at you are thinking about me and looking about me every other second or every other time then i you know i want then you can keep looking and saving as many people as you can and it's just this really sweet, lovely thing. It's like of finding this balance that they really work together. And a, a lot of the beginning stuff, a lot of the stuff throughout, is just a little bit of misunderstandings of like the early relationships where you're like, oh, this person said this. I don't know how to take that. And I don't know what it really means. And us as readers are able to pick out these things of little things. Like one of the very early stories is like, Takio is propositioned by the judo club of the high school to help them compete because their captain's gotten sick. And Takio used to compete in middle school and was like a national champion or something of that nature, and, but hasn't competed since entering high school. So it's like, I don't know if I want to. It means I guess spend less time with my girlfriend. And Rinko's like, no, I really think you should. Plus, I want to see you, you know, doing judo and being awesome like you are but I believe in you and I, they need your help, so you should help them. And he goes and does the training the first night, and Rinko's waiting for him outside, because they don't go to the same school. And he goes and he sees her, and he's like so happy to see her, and then he sees a sign behind her that says, like, uh, caution, there have been dangerous men seen in this area. And he's like, he runs up to her and he's like, you need to never do this again. You never wait for me after school. Never. And she's left confused and doesn't understand what she did or what's going on and asks Sinokawa about it. And Sinokawa's like, knowing Takio, there's probably a reason. And I don't think he ever flat out says to her why, but she's like, okay, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to believe that he has a reason for this. It's not that he's fallen out of love with me, that there might be an actual purpose or reason behind it. Yeah, and that's a lot of the beginning is just those little misunderstandings of, you know, Figure, and figuring things out and thing, different things. I do love, like, every single time Takio sees her, you can see his thought bubbles, and he literally reads, every time he sees her, he reads, I love her. And it's just like, 
that's such a sweet thing. And I'm like, it, and it's true. And it's that thing of like, he falls in love with her again every time he sees her. It, this series is solely focused on the main two characters and Sunikawa, the best friend. And like, Sunika, I expected Sunikawa to be the third love triangle thing to fight for her, but that never came to be. I then started to wonder if Sunikawa might be homosexual and actually into Takio, but that never revealed itself to be the case. There was a later point where there's another pretty boy who keeps who has befriended Sunikawa and is taking him away from Takio. And I'm starting to think that that might be the sign that that's coming to be, but no, it was just that the pretty boy didn't like Takio, and he was trying to befriend Sunikawa and get him to leave Takio because the pretty boy wanted friends that would last. Or he, yeah, he was a very twisted individual who wanted long-lasting friends, but because he kept moving from school to school to school to school, he never got to have any. And so he just believed everyone was, you know, evil and just wanted to be around people like himself and thought that Sunikawa was that way, but nope. And he ends up a better person after befriending and realizing that Takio is a really good, kind person. Anyway, I was expecting that to end up being like, oh, this was him being revealed as a homosexual, but that was not the case. And then we get to Sunikawa's love interest. And it is a girl named Yukika Amami. And... She is a quiet little nerdy girl who has been going to school with Takio and Sunakawa since grade school and or in elementary school. And in elementary school, um, Sunakawa who what and her were on the same team during a dodgeball tournament. And in, in dodgeball, Sunakawa had never been hit. He dodged everything. He was never attacked. A ball was heading towards uh Yukika and Sunikawa got in the way and took the hit and kept her from being hit in the face. And she developed a huge crush on him and started writing letters every Valentine's Day that said, you know, um, I just want you to know I truly love you and I don't expect anything in return. I just want you, my feelings... All right, I don't want anything from you. Please return my feelings type of thing. It's, it's like the way it's worded is really weird. Basically, it's the I want my feelings acknowledged. But she doesn't sign it. She's too scared to ever sign the letter. And at a certain point, she starts following around Takio and Sunikawa. And Takio, being this superhuman person, is able to sense it and catches her doing that. And she reveals that she's been following Sunikawa because she's in love with him. And all this stuff. And it's like this really sweet thing where they ask, he's like, what? It's like, why do you, he asked her why she loved Sunikawa. And she told that story. And he's like, no, yeah, but what about him is like, do you love? And she's like, I love everything. He's the perfect person for, he's like, he fits my ideal man. And it's like, and Takio's like, uh, you know, he has all of these flaws. He's selfish. He's blunt he's very lazy at certain points and she's like i know all that yes I, it's not that he fits he fit my ideal person to begin with it's that from loving him and watching him and loving him my ideal person became him so instead of having an ideal of like i want someone that looks like this and acts like this and this is that obviously it warped and be, it changed to be a pure exp expression of love towards Sunikawa. And with the help of Takio and Rinko, they were able to get her to tell Sunikawa how she felt. And he actually went on a date with her. And he actually seemed somewhat interested in her. And I was hoping for something to kind of come from that. But part of it, I think, was is that she was pushing a little too hard when she actually started getting closer to that and that she wanted him to return her feelings. And it's one of those things where it's like, she was pushing a little too hard. It's like, because she's like, I love you. Will you return my feelings? And it's like, 
girl, you you've loved him since kindergarten. He's hasn't he's only but you haven't had it just even the most conversation you've had is in this one day. You, how about just let's go out for coffee first? But yeah, he ends up telling her turning her down and staying friend but they leave they part on good terms as friends. And I was really kind of hoping that she would just be a constant reoccurring character and that we would see towards the end of the series that that would build into something. And I'm really, really sad it did not. I am like, and I'm really, it's like, I'm really sad Sumikawa did not get his own love interest other than her in this one. And he didn't get a happy ending for himself in this one. And that is really sad to me because Sumikawa is actually an amazing character and a really good friend and deserves a love story by the end of this. And honestly, I really hope this, like this, author writes a spin-off series that's all about Sunakawa finding a love in his own love. I doubt it'll happen, but I would love that. I would think it would be amazing. If even if it was just again Yukika and him and just building up a relationship with them being both older people and growing since the one date they went on would be interesting. But yeah, that's it's just a lot of slow stories and not slow stories, but you know, just building on the relationship and figuring out how they work and working together, falling in love. And then the series builds towards something really amazing in the final couple of chapters. So I'm just going to say spoiler alert right here. I know I spoil the Sunikawa thing, but eh, I'm going to say spoiler alert for the finale of this. Cause I'm going to talk about it. Cause I really liked this ending. So, for those those of you that have heard what I said, and this sounds interesting to you, and it's something you want to read, I actually really recommend this. So yeah, please, read read my love story. Anyway, spoiler alert! So, towards the end of the series, I was like, you get to towards the end of the series, and uh, Takio and Rinko have decided they're going to go to the same college this time, and it's a little bit higher in, which Rinko has the grades for, but Takio does not. But he's been studying with Sunikawa to do it, and Sunikawa plans to go with them as well. And you get to their start of their senior year before the, the exams and going off to college, and um, Rinko's father gets a job in Spain. And the entire family has to go with him. And Rinko is sad and heartbroken by this, but she already knows that like she, she can take the test in Spain for the college that she wants to go to, and then come back in that year and go to school and live in Japan and go to school with Takio, but they have to be apart for the entire high school senior year. And Takio and Rinko are both very saddened by this, but they are both you know, trying to be strong and resolved about it. Like, it's like we can get through this, we can get together and, you know, it's like, we'll be apart, but we we're working towards the goal and it'll only be a year. And you think Rinko's doing okay. Cause she's encouraging her family and trying to keep them up. And then you get a call from Rinko's dad to Takio. And he's like, is she, at your, she's there with you. And he's like, no, it's like, I think she ran away from home. And Takio's like, I will find her. And he goes off and he finds her at this airport. And she's like, I got this ticket to Okinawa. You want to run away with me? And Takio's like, okay. He does this with the full intention of bringing her back. That he is like, he knows that this is not going to be the last. He's going to do everything in his power to bring her back. And is throughout like this entire time is sending Sunikawa like daily updates of being like, I'm, we are here in Okinawa. I'm with her. She's safe. I'm doing my best to convince her to come back type of thing. But he and Rinko go off to Okinawa and are just being tourists and lovey dovey and enjoying the time that they have together. And you get to the point where it's like Rinko comes to the, realization and the knowing that like I can't we can't do this we can't stay here we have to go back don't we and he's like yeah we do 
and he's lying in bed with her, and she's lying in bed with him, and she just curls up against him, and she's like, just, I need you to hold me, and it kind of faces the black, but you get the impression that they did adult activities. It's never 100% specified, but it's somewhat clear that they most likely did at this point. So, yeah, Takio is, stays in Japan and, and is doing his senior year, and Rinko is gone to Spain. And thankfully, this is all set in the modern era, so they have phones, emails, text messaging, and Skype to do. So they are chatting with each other as much as they can. And whenever... And Sunakawa has been helping out and keeping Takio focused on studying and getting his grades up so he doesn't have a chance to get too sad and depressed about her being gone. Meanwhile, Rinko is in Spain, and her family is very happy and really enjoying the time there, and she is slowly falling apart. She just she can't keep her grades up. She's un not able to focus. She's just missing Takio so much. And he she calls him, and she's like, I don't... I, my grades have slipped so far. I don't think I can keep our promise. I don't think I can make it back into the school that we want to go to. And Takio realizes that trying to keep this promise and trying to keep this relationship going is breaking her. And he doesn't want to break her. He wants her to be happy. And he ends up, you know, he wants her to have a chance to be happy again and ends up breaking up with her. Yeah, and literally every character from his, all of his friends, all of her friends, all of the people that have been relation to in Japan, go over to Takio's place and they're like, "We heard you broke up with Rinko. What the heck? You two are the purest love. We want the support. We know. We believed in you guys. What are you doing?" And Sunakawa comes up and goes over to Takio and then proceeds to punch Takio in the face as hard as he can. Because Takio, Sunakawa promised Takio that if Takio ever went too far with something, Sunakawa would hit him and let him know that he'd done the wrong thing. And him getting hit tells Takio what he just did and how bad that was. And he's like, oh god, I screwed up. Okay, I'm going to Spain. And he gets on a plane and flies to Spain. And Rinko's family have dragged her to this festival. And Takio steals these pairs of stilts and goes through the festival and finds her. And he's like, I'm so sorry. I didn't want to hurt you. I'm just, I love you. And I, I, and it's like, I want you to be my wife. And presents her this wing that he, ring that he bought for her two weeks ago for her birthday and it got sent to Spain and then returned because he put the wrong address. And it's like, I would love you to be my wife. Not today, of course, but at a certain point. And she says, yes. And it's just this triumphant love moment. And you cut to six months later, because this was only six months into the year apart. And Takio, Rinko, Takio and Tsunakawa have just graduated, and Rinko's there, and they all meet up, and they've all gotten into the college that they want, and you know they're going to be together, and you get a nice, a nice victory lap, as I would have said, as I've said, uh, where you see all of the characters and all the people they've met, and have everyone is doing better as a result of having seen this love and this relationship, and yeah, that's how this ends, and honestly. This is one of the best mangas I've ever read. It's so unpredictable, and I love that. I mean, it's it's amazing to me. I mean, you have an amazing cast. These all of these characters are memorable and great. You have this amazing story that doesn't follow the same path that every other story does, and that's interesting because arguably it's a straightforward story. It's just not that handsome of a guy, meets pretty girl, falls in love, has a relationship. It's a pretty almost stock story, but it's told 
completely unexpectedly it's told in ways I couldn't like I couldn't see the stuff that was coming the Spain thing like that's an obvious like oh no we're just starting to get towards happiness they're, they're gonna throw this big you know divot of family is moving away and like but I didn't see it coming because it was so far down the line that this couple sh should have been fine and they were fine it was just hard and like long distance relationships are nothing if not hard <laughs> but it's just it's so well told and it's so hilarious and so interesting I'm like there I don't think there's a single part of the story that I hate I love I like I love most of it there's some parts that I'm like uh eh. but I'm like even those have stuff in it that works really well like the love triangle between Rinko and Takio and that uh, Baker person has some really good stuff in it. It's a really good look at Takio's character and how he truly does want to do what's best for her, even if it means hurting himself. And, like, all of the side characters have interesting personalities or interesting stories and how I love how Takio isn't what everyone expects him to be and everyone sees him as this big scary person and yet you meet him and he's a teddy bear and every person who insults him or thinks bad of him, he turns them around and gets them to love him. And it's just, it's really good. And I love the innocence of it. I love the fact that they're just high schoolers. It's, they're not like sex is not a thing that they are thinking about at large points. I'm mean, like, there's a part in the series where Takio has and Rinko are actually going to two different, class trips and they're actually going to the same place and Takio starts to get this uncontrollable desire to touch Rinko and not in a sexual way but like hug her and kiss her and things of that nature and it's like he's fighting so hard to keep himself in control and not wanting to lose control and Rinko doesn't know what's going on and goes to Sunakawa and Takio knocks on the door and Sinekado tells Rinko to hide under the bed, and Takio reveals of the things that he was wanting to do, and it's like, it's a complete repeat of what happened in the first book when Taka found out about Rinko's love for him, but I love that she doesn't pop up and reveal. She actually is a little more devious and starts doing things to get his engine, to get him to be even more out of that, so she starts... Stand, sitting closer to him and doing things that would make him freak out a little bit more because she's like, when I heard that and when I, you know, because she reveals to him that she heard all that and was like, when I heard you say that and that you were thinking those, it made my heart beat really fast. And I just, the and it's like, and Takio's like, oh, that's good. Wait, she did all that on purpose. Oh my God, Rinko's a tease. That's okay. <laughs> but I... Yeah, no, I absolutely loved this series. Everything about this was amazing. I just, and this has an anime that I really want to watch now, but I, like, I, I'm including the link to the live action trailer for that, because that looks awesome. I love everything about that. That looks amazing. And it's just, it's such a nice story that you don't get very often especially with a lead that looks like that. I've seen, like, you get romance stories that's just about being in a relationship and trying to make that work. But it's very rare that that's the entire story. It's almost always something else or some cat, you know, there's some outside force that's causing a thing. Or they just start throwing in multiple love triangles or just multiple other characters to be other focuses for love stories. And it's just, it's interesting to have characters who are very human they're not flawless beings but they're also perfect in the same sense or in the opposite sense anyway and that you know they are trying hard and trying to be good people and they know they have these darker thoughts but they also like are super care about their friends and their family and taking care of other people and helping other people and it's just it's like, I finished, I finished the series, and I'm like, I instantly wanted to add it to my Amazon cart and just get the whole thing and just own it, because it's amazing. I, just, I loved every page of this. Like, 
the art of this is really good. And it's like, it's interesting because they do a great job of doing Takio. It's like, it's not just that he's this big thing. And it's, it's like, you get the idea of like, what this is what people see of him. And then you also, as the series goes, you just see all these cool things he is and all the kind things he does and how much, so much more than his looks he is. And it's so cool to have a main character that looks normal. I mean, he's not normal, but it's nice to have a main character who's not a pretty boy in anime. Because every anime has a pretty boy. If it's not a pretty boy, he's a tough guy. And it's interesting to have a guy who is a tough guy, but is also, like, the kindest person in the world. I don't know. I, yeah, I'm, like, this one for me is a five out of five. Just absolutely perfect. If I was one of those people that felt like going over things, I'd probably give this ten out of five. I think it's one of the best things I've ever read. I put it right up there with my number one manga. It's, it's, it's fighting. It really wants to be my new number one. I think the other one will win just because that one's only three volumes versus the 13 volumes of this one. But this one definitely is putting up a good fight because, oof, I love every second of this. Highly recommend. And that's all for right now. Happy reading, y'all.